Usually I do these videos with a full face of makeup, but today for the sake of the lesson of the video, I'm going au naturel. These cosmetic procedures are becoming so popular with teens, plastic surgeons have coined a new syndrome for it, Snapchat dysmorphia. I downloaded Facetune, which I actually haven't really used before. Um, we're going to take a selfie. I can change the color of my eyes. I could have, ooh, I could live out my anime fantasy and I could have purple eyes. I can change my entire face shape, which is crazy to me. I grew up just before the rise of the social media influencer, before technology allowed everyone to look perfect. Back then, I still wanted to change a lot about myself. I wanted to change my jawline because I always thought it was too wide. I wanted to change the shape of my nose. I wanted a brow lift because I hated my brow. These are all things that I have come to love and appreciate myself for. I have come to terms and I'm able to love my body. But if I felt this way before the rise of social media and the influencer, how are teens and tweens dealing with it now? Welcome back to Technality. I'm your host, Jacqueline Swan, and I'm not here to terrify you per se, but I'm also not here to calm your existential dread, mainly because I'm filled with it. Growing up, I loved a book called Uglies by Scott Westerfield. The novel is set in a future that, on the surface, looks like a utopia. Resources aren't scarce, and the world seems to get along. Also, up until the age of 16, you are considered ugly. On your 16th birthday, though, you're given a surgery that lets you become society's standard of beautiful or pretty. Some people reject it, but they're seen as outcasts, as rebels, and they're brought to justice to have said surgery. That concept has always fascinated me. Growing up with the knowledge that regardless of how you look, you will never meet society's beauty standards. You need the technology and resources they have to fit into society, to become beautiful, to become an acceptable member of that world. And there's no way to grow up in that society and feel good about yourself. Now, our society isn't far off from this. Not the required surgeries at 16 to become beautiful, but needing outside resources from the people who are telling you you're not perfect enough. I used to think there was just fat and skinny. Apparently, there's a lot of things that can be wrong on your body. My hairline is so weird. My pores are huge. My nail beds suck. It is incredibly easy to make yourself look the way you want to look online. We are given the opportunity to fix the things we don't like about ourselves and then post those online, creating the image of the person we think we should be, that we want to be. And that better version gets attention. Social media pushes images of people who are beautiful. You are getting the feedback of people telling you that you are gorgeous in these images even though it's not really you. And the more attention, the more likes that we see, we get a dopamine rush. We know that's how social media works. And we become addicted to that attention. And we're afraid that if we don't look like those Instagram models, we will be forgotten, we'll be ridiculed, we won't get the likes. It's getting harder to embrace ourselves and see ourselves for who we actually are. Going back to Westerfield's world and uglies, it's hard to grow up in a society that tells you you are ugly and that you will never live up to these unrealistic and oftentimes physiologically impossible beauty standards. Not only knowing that there is a fix for how you look, but knowing that the only way you could be considered not ugly is to get said fix. And we know that social media in general has a negative effect on people's body image, especially in young women. This is something that researchers have been looking into for years, and they know that social media can lead to depression and eating disorders. So do the social media platforms themselves. Social comparison is worse on Instagram. That's a direct quote from Facebook's own research into teen girl body image issues. And the American Society of Plastic Surgeons released a report on who received plastic surgery and for what in 2020. Those 13 and 19 only made up 2% of those who received plastic surgery. That's 229,000 teens who sought out cosmetic surgery, and that number still feels pretty high. The surgeries they were most likely to get to were nose reshaping, eyelid surgery, ear surgery, laser hair removal, and laser skin resurfacing. These are all little tweaks that are meant to help perceived imperfections. However, getting these surgeries doesn't necessarily help with social media-induced body dysmorphia. In most cases, it can make it worse. And beauty standards are constantly evolving. It is a billion dollar industry. An industry that was valued at 511 billion in 2021. 
and nearly $16.7 billion was spent on cosmetic surgery in the States alone for 2020. And Lightrix, the developer of Facetune, is valued at $1.18 billion. There is money in making people feel insecure. Nothing has really changed since I was learning about the negative effects of ads in school. Except now the people trying to sell me what I should look like are everyday people on my newsfeed. Influencers who are still everyday people being paid to show me what I should look like. Social media in the age of face tuning isn't going away. Like in Westerfield's Uglies, do we accept that the only way to meet society's beauty standards is through the help of technology? Or does a lot of this come down to how we're able to love ourselves? If we are able to accept and acknowledge that what we're seeing online isn't real, can we accept our most authentic selves? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if you are interested in seeing more content like this, please subscribe to Technality and leave us a like.